All right, good morning, and thanks for clicking on to Vogan's European Outlook, or should I say Global Outlook, because we are going to look at uh, the United States, we're going to look at Australia, and also Europe in today's video. I know in yesterday's video I mentioned about talking about the thunderstorm threat with the heat uh, during the second half of this week, and I will touch on that in tomorrow's video, but uh, a couple of things that actually just kind of caught my eye uh, when I was doing a little bit of my research to, uh, you know, look at what I was going to talk about uh, today. And um, it is quite eye-catching, actually, some of the some of the model output for the next couple of weeks. And I want to speak about that instead of uh, the thunderstorm threat, because it isn't imminent. It's going to come, uh, you know, in a few days' time when temperatures peak probably in the 32, 33 range. I know I said in yesterday's video that I thought the maximum would be 30. I think I'm probably underdoing that slightly. Um, but again, uh, I'll discuss that more along with the thunderstorm threat in tomorrow's video. But today I want to look at the CFS V2 weeklies and some very interesting things uh, showing up in the models. Uh, now, firstly, I want to look at the United States. Big ridge of high pressure over the midwest at the moment here the ohio valley we've got a, a very powerful area of high pressure and uh, we've got the trough on the west coast which is quite interesting so temperatures are somewhat suppressed in in the pacific northwest in particular uh, where we've seen some mountain snow uh, recently uh, temperatures as well uh, about th three four or five days ago uh, peaked at 122 degrees a lot of attention on that at Death Valley, California, temperatures are, are much lower now. The heat will come back uh, eventually uh, here, but at the moment it is uh, below normal. And uh, you can see that with the um, upcoming seven day uh, two meter temperature anomaly here off the CFS V2. But you notice here, uh, week two, the core of the heat kind of shifts a little bit further west. Texas, by the way, roasting extreme heat. We're going to potentially see some very significant records breaking, I think, over the next couple of weeks in Texas, uh, you know, drying things out. Uh, and, of course, uh, the temperatures are going through the roof here. Uh, still a little bit cooler than normal up across the uh, Intermountain West, the northern uh, Rockies and interior Pacific Northwest. You can see here below normal, but the temperatures are coming up as we go through the period here. But it is interesting to see that uh, we could end up starting to see temperatures coming down, especially across more southern areas with the ridge uh, then uh, building towards the, the west coast and therefore California and up into uh, Oregon, Washington, we'll see the temperatures rising quite significantly. If I'm shaking, uh, it's because I'm unloading fish here in Lark Hall at the moment. It's not because I'm having some sort of a fit. <laughs> Don't want you panicking. Um, at least you're not hearing any weird noise. Well, I was going to say you're not hearing any weird noises of traffic, but you might actually hear uh, them uh, unloading in the back, so that you might find that is an unusual noise uh, for today, along with my bouncing around. But uh, yeah, so United States, interesting heat across the Midwest at the moment. It will back west, replacing the unusual cool across the West Coast with uh, you know um, some pretty decent heat uh, for the time of the year. Looking at um, Australia, this is something that's uh, caught my eye. Now, this is a tweet that was put out this morning from Tom Saunders, meteorologist at uh, Sky News Australia, based in Sydney. And he wrote this tweet and said, Confirmation today of what we already know. Spencer's Creek, which is in New South Wales, has a natural snow depth of 118.3 centimetres which is the highest for June 15th or any time in the first half of June since 1968. So they're off to the races with regards to the snow season in Australia. And, uh, you know, of course, it's still uh, early winter here. And uh, I thought that was quite interesting to see. And when you look at the, the GFS, in sawmill temperatures, a lot of cool across Australia at the moment here, including Tasmania, some very, very cold weather here if i play through the loop you can see here plenty of cool remaining but you notice here the heat over the western portion of australia then starts to spread its way across the continent and um, australia does warm up quite significantly 
That being said, towards the end of the loop, you notice here some cold air coming off Antarctica and it actually wipes out essentially the, the, the building of heat. And by the time we get to the end of the loop, there's more blues more than, than reds, I think, showing up on the charts here across Australia. And it looks as if uh, when you look at the pressure chart here, the 500 millibar height anomalies, uh, there is significant uh, lower than normal pressure across much of Australia. So that's quite interesting to see here that we've got either uh, neutral to negative heights over pretty much all of Australia. There's no unusual high pressure or anything. So this is pretty significant stuff actually, really, when you look at that. And we'll, we'll look at this more in detail as we go through their winter season or our summer season, of course. But uh, yeah, um, there's definitely things going on um, with Antarctica at the moment. And if you've got that negative AAO instead of a, uh, of course, that's the, the relation to the, the AO, which I talk about a lot in the Northern Hemisphere. You've got the same over Antarctica as well. I and mean, you've got that negative uh, Antarctic Oscillation, Australia tends to get colder weather. And of course, with the cooling of the Indian Ocean, we've got very warm waters to the east of Australia, uh, increased rainfall. And, and then, generally speaking, the temperature comes down when you increase the rainfall. And we're seeing that in, across parts of Mexico. Uh, unusually cool temperatures down within the tropical belt. So, uh, you know, Mexico, Central America, and into to the northern portion of South America, we've got temperatures suppressed compared to normal, and we're increasing rainfall. So it, it is quite interesting to see that, actually. And finally, I want to look at Europe, because um, this surprised me somewhat. Uh, but you've got the, the upcoming seven-day period, not overly surprising. Cooler across the north, warmer across the south. We've got cool across uh, Turkey, as you can see here. But look at look at the uh, Iberia, uh, and a lot of attention on this heat wave, earliest heat wave, uh, most intense for the time of the year in twenty odd years. I've seen that there's going to be global warming thrown in to the mix as well, and of course the temperatures coming up in the UK as well uh, as low pressure from the Atlantic moves in forces the heat north into the into France and into the UK. And now. Uh, we don't know exactly how hot it's going to get in the southeast of the British Isles, but a lot of attention is getting drawn to this heat wave, but it's only going to last a couple of days, and then we're actually going back into cooler than normal conditions again. And um, certainly if you look at the CFSV2, this is eye-catching, because it's indicating very much firmly below normal uh, from the, the final 10 days of the month here. So day 8 through 14, which takes us out to the 20th of June. And yeah, that actually surprised me at, at how bullish it was in terms of cooler than normal as opposed to warmer than normal. And even into the, the, you know, the final days of June and through the first five days of July, it's cooler than normal. And um, so, yeah, well... We'll certainly have to keep an eye on this as we go forward. Certainly worth keeping abreast the situation here on my YouTube channel. Keep it right here. We'll continue to discuss not only what's going on in the United States, Australia, Europe. Uh, I like to look at everything as opposed to just one aspect. And I, I'm, I try to be as unbiased as possible when it comes to the warming things and climate change and whatnot. I, I try to say it as it is as opposed to just uh, you know an agenda-driven uh, channel. This is very much an unbiased opinion, I think, when it comes to, to climate overall. So certainly that is very interesting to see how the, the CFS is, V2 is indicating uh, quite a cool uh, you know, final um, week or so of June and first week of July. And then it does, uh, the model does uh, switch around and it's very hard to keep it cool for any length of time at this time of the year, of course. Um, so yeah, I uh, appreciate you watching as always. Please, uh, of course, do me a favor, hit the like button, and even better still, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. I'll be hopefully back again tomorrow, discuss the heat and also the thunderstorm threat for the end of the week. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. Bye for now.